via telephone, Fred Albert, president of the American Federation of Teachers, West Virginia chapter. Fred, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you all this morning? Great, thank you. How's your health? Doing very well, except I'm uh, suffering right now from my springtime allergy season, and uh, my voice is about... uh, an octave lower than it normally is, and I'm sneezing like crazy. But other than that, I have nothing to complain about. Well, I could complain about a lot. But, uh, <laughs> don't don't not, sell yourself short, Fred. Come on. <laughs> I'm grateful for good health right now. Nothing wrong with dropping the voice an octave. You can walk around doing Barry White impressions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Goodness. Fred, uh, we're, what, uh, a month and a week or so out from the end of the school year, right? That's absolutely right. I know here in Kanawha County, the last day for students, I passed a school yesterday, and they have it posted on their outdoor uh, billboard, uh, May the 25th, last day for students here in Kanawha County. And I think that's that's similar in other counties around the state. So it's coming to a quick end. Um, I know the general summative assessment is being administered uh, as we speak in some schools. I uh, hope that all of the students do their very best. I hope they got a good night's sleep and that their test scores will be uh, where we want them to be, nice and high. Fred, uh, you, know, you mentioned the May 25 at the school you passed as the last day. And I know in the past, especially from being a student way back when, it was the students who were counting down that last day going, yeah, we can't wait to get out of school. But I, I get the feeling now it's as much the teachers as, as it is the students for the break at the end of the year. I think it, I think it always has been. The teachers just hit it a little better before. You know? it, it always has been. It always has been. You know, Maybe they hit it a little better, but uh, it's always been teachers as well. I, I talked with some teachers uh, just last week. I was in a meeting, and they're, they're just praying that they can make it till the very end. Well, take me through this 20 22-23 school year, Fred. We began it with a shortage of teachers and some questions as to how we were going to cover some key classrooms, uh, subjects. Uh, That uh, shortage also extends to bus drivers and staff as well. So how did we get through another school year without the number of people we needed? Thank the good Lord for our substitutes uh, where we can find them. But I will tell you, we're ending the the year the same way we started it, with a shortage. Um, and teachers are exhausted from, and bus drivers and cooks, from the shortages that we're experiencing. Uh, you know, many teachers have given up planning periods. Um, they've worked extra to make sure that students are taken care of. That's our number one priority, of course, is the safety and the well-being and the care of our children, uh, our students in school. So, But they're exhausted because it has been... Um, Better uh, as far as, you know, before or during COVID, I think this year has been more normal, if you will, uh, in that regard. But we're still finding that we just don't have enough teachers. We don't have enough substitutes. Um, So it's putting a heavy burden on everyone. I I woke up this morning um, while I was already awake, but my first uh, duty this morning came from a member around 615 uh, who was uh, contacting me because this is the second time, and I, I will not mention the county, but this is the second time that they didn't get their pay. Uh, their pay day is today, and the checks didn't go through for whatever reason. How does that happen, uh, Fred? I, well, I, <laughs> I don't know where the glitch is. I've already uh, contacted the superintendent's office in that county to try to find out you know, what the problem is, how we can help, uh, if we can help. But that that's just an extra burden uh, on not only our teachers but service personnel because many, many of our um, employees live paycheck to paycheck. And when that paycheck is not in the bank, they start panicking, understandably so, because, you know, they have obligations that come out of their um, checking account. And it's it's very concerning. So this is the second time in that particular county where it's happened. And I, I don't know the, I don't know the problem whether it's maybe a shortage in the payroll department. Uh, I, I just don't know the answer to that at this moment. But when I called the superintendent, I'm sure his phone was blowing up, and he will get back with me. Um, so hopefully we find a resolve before the before the day wears on much further. 
Fred, how are those paychecks administered? Are those state paychecks? Are they county paychecks? Well, the state gives, you know, so much to the county, but the county then uh, supplements uh, the paychecks. So the, the payroll departments are in the counties. So it's a county um, obligation or function. Um, and I, I know even in Kanawha County, one time I had a over a holiday, there was a mishap with with my paycheck. And it, it is very concerning because you, like I said, you have obligations that you want to meet and you'll have people knocking on your door because they didn't get what they're supposed to be getting from your pay. So it's just another, uh, the only reason I mention that is that's another stressor that our educators will have to deal with in that particular county today on top of everything else. Matt Miller. So when you look at all of the challenges that you have already spoken of, um, how are you able to try to encourage young people who are coming from high school and heading into college to say, this is the career that you should choose, go be a teacher, and change a life? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Matt, and it is a challenge, you know, to to make this profession attractive to young people, but I am encouraged. I just attended uh, the Milken uh, ceremony uh, at the Culture Center uh, a few weeks ago, and in conjunction with that celebration, we had West Virginia Teach, uh, the initiative that's being uh, pushed out from the State Department to encourage young people to start early in their junior and senior year thinking about the teaching profession. And we had a great, great, great group of young people there who are in this particular uh, initiative. Uh, they're excited. We We were able to talk in small groups. Uh, we did a rotation uh, with these young people and to listen to them and to know that we still have young people encouraged about this profession. Another um, event that I was able to be a participant in was the uh, Underwood Smith Scholarship Program, uh, which awards students who are wanting to be teachers um, they apply for this scholarship, and they are awarded, if, if they make it, uh, if they're chosen, if they're selected, they will get $10,000 a year for four years to get their teaching degree. Now, they need to stay in West Virginia. That's one of the requirements. After they go through that program, they need to make a commitment to West Virginia, and I believe it's for at least five years. So we uh, were going to be able to award uh, in that program, about 28, uh, almost 30 students. And I'll tell you, the, the interviews, they, they submit a video. Uh, they talk about their desire to be a teacher, why they are thinking about that. I was very, very impressed. So there's hope out there. We just have to continue to uplift this profession because, you know, I've, as I've said before, it's the profession that makes all other professions possible. Uh, we all owe something to a, a teacher that we had. So I'm encouraged. It is a challenge, but I think we're doing some good things to to um, uplift this profession and to encourage young people to explore going into the profession. Are you finding the teacher shortage in a particular grade level across the mountain state? It, it's all over. You all know, over. it used to be math and science but it's all over. It's early childhood. Uh, the challenges, it seems like, with some of the family situations and the student behavior uh, is also adding another level of concern for our educators. So it, it's really all over. I, you know, it used to be everyone, well, not everyone, but many people chose early childhood uh, for whatever reason. And that's not easy. To, don't don't get me wrong, that's not an easy uh, grade level to uh, choose to go into as an educator, but because so much is required of them, they have to do it all. They have to teach English and science and math and and music and, and all of those disciplines. But we're experiencing now, even in the uh, early childhood area, a shortage of teachers. How many... Eight, oh, class to maids. Jonathan Bodwell. Fred, how many teachers are we short? Uh, this year in the state, just roughly? The last figure I heard was 1,544. Now, that means those positions are filled by long-term subs or certified teachers, but they're not necessarily certified in that particular discipline 
uh, where they're teaching. So it's grown. Uh, I, I expect that it will continue to grow until we can find a stabilization and and get some people in interested in this field. But you know, in 2015, we had about 500, uh, around 500 some. Uh, by 2021, that had doubled, and now this year we had 1,544 uh, uncertified well, positions available. That's just that's just teachers, Fred. That's teachers. Uh, I don't know the number on our service personnel, but I know that they're really struggling to get bus drivers, um, cooks, custodians. Mm -hmm. There's a shortage in in all of those areas. Classroom aides. Well, I mean, I I got really excited when you were talking about that scholarship, but 28 to 30 to 1,544 is is not even (laughs) putting a finger in the dike, as it were, you know? No, it's not. But the the encouraging thing to me is that we still uh, are attracting some young people, and hopefully they will uh, attract others into the field. Because, you know, it is a noble profession. It is – I've worked in several different areas, uh, but teaching to me was the most fulfilling uh, profession that I've ever had. Well, you've got – Fred, you've got your finger on the pulse I mean, as as the head of the American Federation of Teen- Teachers of West Virginia, well, what uh, what is the one thing? What is one thing th- above anything else that would bring people back to the teaching profession? That's that's a tough question, but the one thing that I, I keep hearing is respect for the profession. Um, you know, it used to be, and I hate to talk about used to be's because used to be's don't fly anymore <laughs> sounds like but, a neil diamond song <laughs> yeah, used to be it, it, it used to be that um you know this profession was sacred it was regarded as uh a high position or or people in, uh, standing in the community that was revered i i can remember hearing my parents who are both now gone but uh they talked about the teachers they had and what they meant in their lives and We've kind of lost that along the way for whatever reason. I know there are many reasons out there, but that's the one thing that I hear is we need support, we need respect, and and I think that would help tremendously. And we need to stop blaming teachers for everything that, that happens. Well, I can, I can remember when I was young, my parents having teachers over for dinner, my friends' parents having teachers over for dinner. I mean, I think, I think my fourth grade teacher, I think, um, ate. You know, everybody in the everybody in our class is, is house like once every month or two. I mean, it was a pretty good deal for them. Well, and those, those were relationships that you built also that are lifelong, um, and I think that's so important. Fred Albert is our guest. He is the president of the American Federation of Teachers, uh, West Virginia chapter. There, Fred, as you project toward the next school year. What are you hearing from your base? More retirements, more uh, people changing professions, more shortages, or is it a better outlook? Well, I would like to think it's going to be a better outlook, but I'm hearing that some people, uh, even younger people that haven't, are not necessarily retirement age, they're just, they've had it. Uh, They can't deal with the stress much anymore, and they're saying, I'm looking somewhere else, or I'm looking for another state. Uh, because, you know, we still lag behind. I know we just received, we'll be receiving a $2,300 pay raise for all public employees, school teachers, and service personnel. And that is, we're thankful for that, very grateful. But we also know that uh, coupled with that, we have uh, probably the largest premium increase in our uh, insurance that we've had in my history. Um, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't have an increase because we've been saying all along, you know, we have to pay more. We have to, but 24.7% all at once, that's a big hit. Uh, but beside all of that, um, I'm, I don't know that our retirements are up. I've been closely watching the personnel agenda here in uh, Kanawha County, and it doesn't seem to be that we have uh, an exorbitant amount of retirements scheduled. Usually those are, you know, on the agenda this time of the year. But in other counties, it, it, it could be so. Um, but we're hopeful. We're just hopeful that we can stabilize this uh, shortage and 
keep it from growing further. Fred, the $2,300 increase, uh, will that also be supplemented by those who get step increases as well that are scheduled? It's what I understand, yes. So that didn't bypass the step increases. That'll be in addition to any steps. That is the way I understand it, yes. John. Well, the... um do they publicize going to teacher retirement? We have a very stable um, teacher's retirement. We are funded. Right. We're not. We're not ridiculously underfunded. Do they ever talk about that? Like that? I think it's at about seventy-eight percent funded now, which is uh, which is high compared to so many is, other states. Is. I mean, do we ever and, talk about that with our teachers? That hey, you know, you're not going to have to worry that your pensions aren't going to be there like they are in you know ten, fifteen other states. I mean, I would think that would be a a positive talking point to to keeping teachers on board. Absolutely, we do we do try to promote that because you know we've. We haven't always been in a good place, but I think because of the investment board, the job that they've done, um, and and we're paying at that down, I think within the next 10 years, uh, that will be taken care of. It will be fully funded, is what I've heard from the uh, actuarial studies, that it should be fully funded in about 10 more years. So that is a, that is a great thing, and we do try to promote that, yes. Let me also ask, as far as, um, I mean, I know we're, we're getting pay raises across the board in the state for state employees, which is which is great. They are sorely underpaid. We all know that. Right. Um, substitute pay, is that, that's not a part of it. Are, is substitute pay across the state, I know it's gone up in the past, is that going to go up for the coming year? Well, I haven't heard that it will, but it needs to because, you know, some people are saying, it's just not enough for me to get up and go to substitute because you know substitutes sometimes they have it rough they don't they don't have the best uh life in many cases St- some students will take advantage of substitutes you know we historically that has happened and there again um covid the pandemic did a number for our substitutes some just said i'm not doing this anymore or I will only go to one particular school. So that is a, that is an issue, and I hear from substitutes that we represent, and they tell me all the time we need to try to increase the pay for substitutes because I don't think it has kept pace. Because they don't, I mean, unless you're a long-term sub, and I don't know exactly what the rules are, but unless you're a long-term sub in a position right. for more than a certain amount of days, you're not getting health insurance, you're obviously not getting the retirement that's I mean, right. two of the things that are, are very, very big benefits, because even with the increase in PEIA, I mean, teachers are still paying so much less than private sector people for their insurance, and you do have that retirement. I mean, one of the great things that I think should be pushed and should be told to these kids as they're growing up is, look, you can, what is it, 30 years as a teacher, 55 years old, you can retire with a huge percentage of your salary, you can double dip, you can go and do something else. I mean, that to me is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow for teachers. It is, it is a good selling point. However, I know many teachers who have retired, and then they come back uh taking on long-term jobs because it wasn't as good as they thought it was going to be. Uh, and, and that's an individual thing. Everyone's well, different. I know he, some teachers who have retired and they're, they're traveling around having a great time. But I talk to friends all the time who uh, – and, and I had a piece of advice from uh, someone that I, I really had held in high esteem, a former principal of mine. And she told me – she's since passed away, unfortunately, she – she got dementia and passed away, but she told me, she said, don't retire, and this has been several years ago, don't retire too early. I think I did, and I, I sort of regret it. So, you know. Well, but you see, but a lot you're, of... You're right. There, there's things that you can, uh, there are options that you have. You can do other things. But a lot of military, um, police officers, firefighters, I mm-hmm. mean, you go through, you get a pension. It's not meant, meant to pay absolutely everything when you retire, right. especially if you get to retire at 50, 55 years old. It gives sure. you the ability to double dip, where if you've got a pension of you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, and then you double dip, all of a sudden you're, you know, you're making $125,000, $150,000 for the last 10 years. And also, if correct me if I'm wrong, when you when you get to full retirement, you retire as a teacher, 
you keep your health benefits. I mean, you have to pay for them, but there's that, that break in between 55 and 65 when people can go on Medicare, when it's very, very difficult for people to retire because of the high cost of health care, but teachers maintain their health care during that time, correct? Well, you can, uh, yes. Now, that you brought up a good point. One of the things that I think really needs to be looked at, and, and this would help with I believe shortages and especially substitute shortages is if we, um, you know, I'm, I'm in what's called the old plan where the days that I accrued mean something because when I do retire, those days can be used to buy years of service or they can be used to buy your pay for your health care uh, until you reach Medicare age. Uh, for our younger teachers, and I cannot remember the date that it changed, that doesn't that is no longer true. Their days, they can accrue days, but they really don't mean anything when they decide to retire because, and that's why some of them are of the mindset, well, these are my days, I'm going to use them, and I think that that really needs to be studied. I know it comes up. Uh, during the regular session from time to time. But I think that if we looked at that, uh, it's going to cost some money, but I think that would truly help, especially with the shortage. Fred, so, what, what, what does a typical teacher make in retirement? What's a typical well, pension? It depends, on, it depends on your years of service. Right. There's, there's a formula. It depends on your uh, level of degree. Uh, but you could make about half. Uh, or a little more than what you normally, of your regular salary. So the the typical teacher who retires might be making twenty five, thirty thousand a year in a pension. That could be yes, yes. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more, depending again on their years of service. You know, if they retire with forty years of service or thirty five years of service, and if they have their masters plus uh, hours that would increase their, their pay. And does that ever go up as you retire, or is that, does no. that remain the same? <laughs> no. That's never that's adjusted for other, inflation, right? No that, that's the other. That's the other thing that we hear from our retirees. You know, This year, uh, the legislature did, and, and I, I was shocked to find this out, but we have some retired public employees that make less than $1,000 a month So on their retirement. So the um, what the the legislature did was they're giving them a one-time check if you are 70 years of age or older, and if you worked, I believe it was, if you taught for 20 years or more, you're getting a one-time check of $1,500. It's going to be like the 13th check they call it, or the 13th pay. And your monthly increase, that's a one-time deal. Mm -hmm. And then the monthly increase, would they would increase their um, retirement up to $1,000. So if you're making, let's say, $800 a month, they're going to pay you $200 more. You get a bump. All right. Well, and they also, they all get Social Security also. I mean, all state employees pay into Social Security. That's true, yes. Fred, thanks for your time this morning. We are out of it. I appreciate uh, the half hour with you, sir. It's always my pleasure, and if you see my friend Jockey Long uh, around and about, be sure and tell her I said hello. She is She's in maybe the, listening. She is. I saw her name in the commenting community <laughs> she, this morning. She, she's doing a great job as a as a school board member. I really appreciate all of her dedication. Thank you, Fred. Thank you all. Have a great day.